So today I'm going to teach you a new word. All right, it's a very long word, and then I'm going to describe what it is. But this way, you can go to a party and sound very smart. So what is this word? The word is AMPK. What does that stand for? 5' prime adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase. Okay, so just memorize that word and you can use it at a party. So what is this thing? Well, it's the mitochondria protector. They call it the guardian of your metabolism. Now, in this sense, uh, metabolism isn't necessarily just about weight loss. It's about producing energy. And this energy is produced in the mitochondria. So basically, it's the central regulator of energy homeostasis. So homeostasis is the ability to adapt the internal part of your body to the external part of the environment so we can maintain survival. So if it's cold outside, our body starts to shiver to increase temperature. That's homeostasis. If you were to run up stairs, your pulse rate would go up to adjust for the need for oxygen to your brain so you wouldn't pass out. That's homeostasis. So AMPK basically is an enzyme that adapts to things that deplete your cellular energy. So it senses this drop in energy in the ATP, which is like the energy currency of the body within the mitochondria, and then it adapts the mitochondria and other things to be more efficient so it can survive. So it's going to increase more ATP and decrease the consumption of ATP. So basically it rewires your metabolism to make it more efficient. So anytime we're talking about efficiency in the cells, we have to talk about autophagy. And autophagy is the condition in your body where you're recycling old, worn out cell parts and turning them into new cells. So AMPK triggers autophagy. Mitophagy, now what is mitophagy? That's a condition where you're recycling damaged mitochondria into new mitochondria. Now what's significant about that is there's so many diseases, including cancer, that are related to damaged mitochondria. Then we have something called xenophagy, and that is the removal of intracellular pathogens and turn that material into new cells. Now isn't that cool to be able to get rid of pathogens, viruses, and bacteria that are unwanted in your body? And also as a side note, it suppresses tumors, it's anti-cancer, it helps you get rid of diabetes, it helps get rid of a fatty liver, but other than those things, it pretty much doesn't do anything else. All right, so now what's the significance of this enzyme? The main thing we want to know is how do we trigger it, right? Well, anything that lowers your energy will trigger it, like low glucose, as in a low carb diet. Hypoxia, now what's that? That's low oxygen. Uh, I've done a video on this where you're, you can exercise with a certain uh, breathing restriction mechanism to induce hypoxia, and that can activate that as well. We also have exercise, okay, because you're using up your glucose. Fasting, of course, is the big one. You're depleting your glucose and then running out of ketones. And metformin, by the way, which I'm not recommending, and I'm not telling you to get off your metformin either, but I'm just telling you that metformin is a synthetic version of a natural plant chemical that helps you with insulin. It makes insulin more sensitive. It also helps your liver not make so much glucose. And of course, a lot of diabetics are using metformin. I, I think out of all the medications for diabetes, that one probably is the least damaging. But if you're on metformin, I would highly recommend you start taking vitamin B1 and B12 because metformin can deplete you of B1 and that can increase your risk to lactic acidosis. Now, there's some other things, too, that can increase this enzyme AMPK. Polyphenols. Okay, what are polyphenols? It's a natural compound in certain plants. Resveratrol from red grapes can increase this enzyme. Certain phytonutrients in green tea can do it. Berberine is another uh, natural extract that can help increase it. Curcumin is another one. I've done a lot of videos on that. Ginseng is another one. And alpha-lipoic acid. So anyway, I just wanted to teach you this long, complex word so you can sound smart at a party. And comment down below and let me know how that goes. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. 
Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.